My name is Jim Todd. I'm the director of Bait Science Education at OMSI. And tonight we're going to take a look at the current night sky. And we're just in the early parts of April. And I'm going to show you some fun things that you can look at in the own backyard during the lockdown. It's very easy. There are a lot of tools that you can use to look at the current night sky. And starting off with, you find download skymaps.com. At the current uh, map for April. Very handy tool to use for our latitude. So you can orient yourself with the map and locate the object this way. And if you have anything handy, you can use a planisphere. The planisphere would be a very useful guide to help you locate the object in the nighttime sky. And then we have your phone. Your phone. It's a very useful tool. There's a lot of wonderful apps that you can use on your phone. It uses the GPS and it can give you the current data or a location of the object in the sky. So what you do is you hold it up like this and then your GPS coordinates will kick in and you move around and it will show you a constellation, Venus, the moon, and the International Space Station. There's a lot of fun things you can look at. And the ones that I recommend are, we have Sky View Free, Google Sky, Heavens Above, Delarium Mobile, Sky, it's also free. And all of these, either it can be free or maybe a few bucks. It's a wonderful tool that really can help you enjoy the nighttime sky. Now let me show you some of the things that are now visible this week and you can use your app and your map to locate these objects. Hey, this is the Virtual Star Party and we're using a online web uh, version of Solarium and it's free and it's easy to use. You don't have to download it but you can actually get a, a downloadable uh, Solarium for the computer as well as the cell phone and tablet. And then we're going to use this so that to use it to be able to show you within the current night sky. So we're now looking at roughly just around sunset, which is about 7.35. Keep in mind when we're looking at these stars here that we're going to be looking at it from your home, from the city. that we have some of the light pollution you have to contend with you might be watching this where you're outside the city, you might see it a little bit more. So let's move forward a little bit and click on that and we'll go a little bit forward. And now we're getting kind of about 7.30. And first easy bright object you would see in the west is Venus. And Venus is the second planet in order from the sun, slightly smaller than the Earth. It has a very thick atmosphere of carbon dioxide, which reflects 75% of the sunlight. And then you notice that Venus has been in our evening sky for a while. And just recently, coming up to the longest elongation, meaning that it's furthest angle from the sun. And it's really bright right now. So if I were to click on that, to come up with the data. And there's that nice data. It's at a minus four. So if it's a minus number, that means it's going to be fairly bright. And you can see A years, astronomical units. One astronomical unit is the distance between the Earth and the Sun. And so now we're seeing, that looked like a, a meteor there. Uh, now we're seeing the phase is at 42%. The reason for that is that Venus is coming around from behind the sun. It's in what we call almost a gibbous phase, and that's why it's bright. So we'll see Venus for another month, and then it starts gradually getting fainter, and it's going to start heading back toward the sun. So that would be the first bright object that you would see soon after sunset. Now. Once you find west, because the sun is set, let me show you over here, go towards the north. There's east, okay? 
So if you're confused about the direction that you're facing, okay, one of the things that's hard from the city, <clears throat> you won't see all of the stars of the Big Dipper or the Little Dipper. So you have some landmark you refer to. In the south, you generally will see the moon. And the moon is over in the south. You notice it's not quite up yet, okay? The moon was full uh, on April 7th. Then let's go back toward the north and I'm show you how to find Polaris. And Polaris would be a way that you can find north. So let's go a little bit further into the evening. So you start seeing some stars. So here we are. Now you start seeing about down to the fifth and the sixth magnitude. Now bear in mind that some of these are not visible from the city. And so I'm just going to show you some way that you can actually look for um, the North Star. Okay, now I want you to find the seven stars of the Big Dipper. And you see the Big Dipper? Let me show you the outline. There you go. The Big Dipper in the month of April before midnight is high above the northern horizon. It's seen as the spoon in the sky. Okay, and there's seven stars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's the handle and there's the bowl. Okay, and the Big Dipper itself is in the bigger constellation called Ursa Major, which is seen as the great bear in the sky. Right? So before midnight, you will find the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is a very useful uh, guide to help you find other constellations and stars. This is actually an asterism. Ursa Major is the constellation. So we're going to take the two end stars of the bowl of the Big Dipper and draw an imaginary line until you come to the first bright star. And that star right there is called Polaris. And this is a, our north star, the star that sits above the Earth's north pole. And so uh, once you find Polaris, Polaris is in the constellation of Ursa Minor. And Polaris, you see, is at about a magnitude of two. Okay, so it's somewhat visible from the city. And that would be the first step to take these two stars, go down to Polaris. Polaris is in Ursa Minor. And this is seen as the small bear. So Ursa Major is the big bear. Ursa Minor is the small bear. And this is also referred to as the Little Dipper. And the, but this time, the handle is pointing up. Then you can see the other two bright stars in the bowl. Now the remaining stars in between are fairly faint. In some cases, when you have a bright moon or a view from the city, you can only see these three stars. Right? And the remaining stars are down to the fourth, the fifth, and sixth magnitude. And so it gets a ton of tough to be able to see all of the stars of the Earth and Minor. In fact, this is the guide if you want to go out and look at good night sky. If you can find all of the stars of Earth and Minor, and then that means that you're in good viewing. If you can see only some, that means it's a little bit challenging. So now we're facing toward the north. You have your compass bearings because you found, found the north star. So if you're facing toward the north, to your left will be west, to your right is east, and behind you is south. Now I'm going to show you this region of the sky right here. All of these stars in constellation close to Polaris is in a region called the circumpolar regions. And these are the stars that always say above the horizon for our latitude. Okay, so as the Earth turns slowly counterclockwise, you will see that they say above our, uh, our horizon. Okay? Now, it's, it's important to point out that Polaris right here okay, is about 45 degrees. So you can see it right there. Okay, That's called altitude. 45 degrees, meaning this. 45 degrees above the northern horizon. It's so essentially halfway up the sky. So directly overhead at zenith, with the observer's view, would be about 90. 
of the horizon is zero. Okay? And so you always know, see the always visible tonight. And that means it stays above the horizon. So imagine if you were at the North Pole. The North Star would be directly above you. The entire sky is circumpolar. If you're at the equator, the North Star is right at the horizon. There is no circumpolar region. Okay? So that's kind of a fun thing to talk about. Now over here we have what look like the five stars. This is Cassiopeia. And this is the, uh, the queen in the sky. Okay? And so Cassiopeia is opposite to the Big Dipper. And once you find Cassiopeia, this is the way you can find the plane of the Milky Way. Now, as I mentioned that, uh, when you view the night sky from the city, it would be difficult to see the Milky Way, and especially when the moon is nice and bright right now. And so, this would be one way to find the Milky Way. Okay? So, here you are, you have all of the uh, northern part of the sky. And I want to point out right here, this C-2019 Atlas, this is a bright comet that's now visible. And it's getting surprisingly bright right now. And let's see if I can find the location of that particular comet. And we'll see that if I'm pointing around, it's going to be somewhere in there. Is there going to be a comet there? No. But there's a comet in that view. Okay. And it's going to be visible to a backyard telescope or binoculars. And it will be in the northern part of the sky for a short period this month. And so that's another object you can view. Okay, so now you have north. Okay, and you orient yourself to the east. And then we're going to go over to the south. Okay. So for our program, I'm going to move from west to south to east. Okay, so let's take a look at the western part of the sky. There's mighty Venus, really bright. Right? And so the first thing you'll notice is all these bright stars over here. Okay? And so we're now looking at Orion. Orion has the three stars that mark the belt. And then we have Rigel, and this star right here is called Betelgeuse. Betelgeuse is a red giant star. Right? It's particularly bright and has that orangey color. And it's about a distance of 400, 497 uh, light years away. What that means is that you're looking at the star at, at 497 light years away. The light that left that star light speed, 186,000 miles per second, traveling 6 trillion, year, 6 trillion miles a year. Took about nearly 497 years to reach your eye tonight. So you're essentially looking back in time. So anytime we talk about light years, think about it that it's taken that long for light to reach your eye tonight. Okay? So here's Betelgeuse, the red giant star. Then there's Rigel. And Rigel is a bright star, it's about almost a zero. But it's a hot blue white star. Now what I'm going to show you, to zoom in a little bit, is to show you all the bright stars in the region. I want you to follow my path. Now here's Rigel. There's the three stars to the belt. You follow these three stars to the left, and you find Sirius. Sirius is the brightest star of the nighttime sky, and a minus one. It's then the constellation of what we call Canis Major, which is the uh, a uh, dog, great dog in the sky. Okay, and then we have Orion, it's the hunter. Okay, and this is the dog. It's one of the Orion uh, hunting dogs. And then we're moving up here to Procyon. Okay, Procyon is the small dog. Okay, so we have Canis Major, Canis Minor. These are the two hunting dogs for Orion. Moving over to Gemini, we have Pollux. 
magnitude about 1.29 and then we have Castor about the same so these are the two stars for Gemini the twin the brothers and then over here we have Capella Capella is fairly bright and this is Auriga Auriga is sometimes referred to as the goat barrier or a charioteer and then moving down go back down to Aldebaran, uh, Taurus the Bull. Okay. It's another red giant star. And then back down to Rigel. So you notice that I made a circle. Rigel, Sirius, Poseon, Pollux, Castor, Capella, and then back to Aldebaran. Okay. This is known as the winter circle. If you connect all these uh, bright stars, sometimes referred to as the winter heptagon. Okay? And so we have all these bright stars in the region of Orion. Okay? And so we have the constellations and we have some wonderful bright objects that you can view with your backyard telescope or binoculars. And so we can go take a look here uh, the first object I want to show you is this one right here. This is right below the three stars. It's a belt of the Great Orion Nebula. Okay, so to get a little bit closer, I'm going to look at the door. There it is, Orion Nebula. Okay, and right there, this is a huge nebulous cloud. And definitely worth a look. Okay, so if I zoom in, Either, this is a uh, nebulous cloud that's located about roughly at a distance of, let's see, what does it have the distance on there? And so um, this is a huge nebulous cloud that is about 100,000 light years across. And the reason that you see in the nebulous cloud is that you have the three bright stars called the trapezium, and they're at the core of the nebula. And in order to see the nebulous cloud, which is a remnant from a dead star, you have to have some star, bright stars nearby. So in, in the nebula, we have a reflective nebula and an emission nebula. And the gas is made of hydrogen. And that's what gives it that reddish color in a picture. Okay. So this is an area where you see a stellar nursery, where stars are born and stars die. Okay. And so... If you were to imagine going there, you would see uh, the wonderful view of the nebulous cloud, and it's very easy to look at with your backyard telescope, okay? or binoculars for that matter. And so this is a Messier object, which is a catalog of 110 bright objects you can see with the backyard telescope or binoculars. Okay? And so uh, this is a catalog that was de developed by Charles Messier in the early 1600s, where he was a astronomer that was particularly interested in comets. So he kept coming across all these fuzzy objects while he was looking for these comets. So he cataloged them, and they're now called the Messier Catalog. It's a 110 bright object that contains one supernova, globular clusters, nebulas, and galaxies. And so, let me show you another nice object to look at. Go over here to Taurus the Bull. Okay? And over here, you see the Pleiades. Okay? And the Pleiades is an open cluster of stars. Okay? And to go to Aldebaran, right here, and then you go over here, it's right next to Venus. So, uh, last week, Venus and the Pleiades were really quite close, okay? But the Pleiades is an open cluster of stars, seven bright stars, some, some refer to the seven chickens. And this is an open cluster of stars, and what we're looking at when we see it, we see what look like a halo around the stars, okay? And that's because between us and those seven stars, there's some nebulous clouds that give it that appearance. 
So this is an open cluster, a closed cluster, is when the stars look tightly, uh, tightly packed together. Right? And so you see that Venus is right in the vicinity by uh, the Pleiades. And then nearby, right over here, is another cluster of stars now the Hades is right at the head out toward the bowl. And Aldebaran and Betelgeuse are the two red giant stars. And this is going to become of our sun billions of years from now. It's going to go from a yellow star to a red giant. And then it goes nova, become a planetary nebula. So just so that it's only 10 few billion years from now. So nothing really lose sleep over, but that's what's going to become of our sun um, then. So you're looking at the two red giants. So you can see there's a lot of fun things to look at in the area of Orion, and then moving out over now to the south. Okay. And then right here we have Cancer the Crab, and Cancer okay, has kind of a a Y-shaped pattern. This is uh, the crab. Right? And you see it here. And you can also orient yourself right below the bowl of the Big Dipper. And we can find cancer. And then if we zoom in a little bit closer, you'll see what's called the Parasipi. Parasipi is an, another open cluster of stars. But it's also known as the beehive. Right? Um, because it looked like a swarm of bees. And then back over here to the same area, there's Hydra, the snake. Hydra, you see uh, the snake, and you'll see it, it stretches almost 90 degrees across the sky. This is one of the largest constellations of the nighttime sky. And then right below the bowl of the Big Dipper, we have Leo the Lion. And Leo had the red giant star called Regulus. This is the heart of Leo. And it has this backward question mark, and down at the bottom uh, is Regulus. So the objects that I just showed you should be fairly uh, easy to find from the city. And so you hopefully find this is how you orient yourself. This is what it would look like. And you have all these bright stars over here. It's very at the, the brightest star. And then once you orient yourself, you should be different as the guide. Okay? And so you have Sirius, Poseidon, Castor, and Pollux. And then right here, Capella. Uh, Capella. Not the Capella. There's Capella right there. And then down to Aldebaran, Rigel, right? So kind of like taking a little pop quiz. And then go over here, there's Leo. Okay, there's the Big Dipper, the back with question mark. There's Regulus right there. And then this other bright star right here called the Nebula. And that means tail of an animal, right? And so you have Leo. Right there, Big Dipper pointing right down at it. So we're going to go over to the eastern part of the sky. Okay? And then you right away see a, another bright star. Okay? And I want you to remember this phrase, Art to Art Curious, Speed Down to Spica. Okay? So we're still early in the evening. I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the evening. Okay, and so uh, it's almost dark. Okay, so we're going to now look at the Big Dipper. Use the handle of the Big Dipper to art to art curious. A curious is a huge red giant star, and it's about 36 light years away. And you look at the star, this is one of the largest stars that you could see with your human eye. And if we would have placed that red giant star, we would place our sun with it, it would go out nearly to the orbit of Jupiter. And our curious here, we just take a look at it, it's in the constellation known as Booty's the Herdsman, has the ice cream shaped pattern. 
And then follow on, we've got an art to eye curious. And then there is the moon. I'll get back to the moon for a second. I think they're art to eye curious. Speed down the spike guy right there. Got the hot blue white star. And that's about 249 light years away. So what we're doing here, using a big dipper at the guy post. Now art to eye curious, speed down the spica. And spica's in Virgo, the maiden. It's one of the zodiacal signs. So it's Leo, Cancer, and Gemini. This is the plane of the ecliptic. Okay, with the path of the sun and the planets. Okay. Here is the moon. The moon was just full on April 7th. Hopefully you got to see it. Known as the pink moon because it's a name after a certain kind of flower. Okay. And it's also referred to as the egg moon or grass moon. And so it's just full on the 7th. And each day the moon moves eastward about 13 degrees. So tomorrow night you will find it 13 degrees further to the east. And so the moon goes around the earth in 29 and a half days. And so that means going from full moon to full moon. And say 29 days and a half days to go around the earth once. And so to go through the phases. Okay? And so the moon up is diminished some of the viewing of the uh, fainter stars. Okay? And the moon will be new uh, around April 27th when it, the moon will be in between the sun and the earth. Okay? So there's the moon, there's Arcturus, there's Pika. And those are the few fun objects that you could see in our current night sky. Okay? If you head toward the east, okay, okay, then we'll see Hercules. And Hercules had the keystone pattern of stars. And again, we're going to go back to the handle of the Big Dipper. One, two, three. You make a straight line. You will go to the keystone pattern of stars. And this is seen as the hero. Okay? And then Vega is just starting to emerge into the evening sky. Okay? So now, let's do this. I'm going to bring up the clock and we're going to go forward into the morning sky. People have been asking, okay, so where are all the planets? Okay, so we go into the evening, the morning. Okay, there it is, just before sunrise. Okay, and here, get myself oriented here. Okay, so we're facing towards the east. And just before sunrise, notice where everything that we just talked about, aligned it down. The moon is higher, Vega is up, and then look over here towards the eastern part of the sky just before sunrise, which is going to be roughly about uh, 6.51 now in early April, and then it's at the clock, late April, we have the three planets, Jupiter, Saturn, and Mars. And Jupiter is bright, again, I mean, Jupiter, uh, it's about a magnitude of minus two. Okay? So Venus is a minus four, so it's half the brightness of Venus. So if you take a look at Jupiter, Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. Okay? And when you look at Jupiter, you see the four Galilean moons uh, that would be visible. And so take a look at Jupiter going to be in our morning sky, and then nearby we see Saturn. Saturn, it's about roughly a zero magnitude, and Saturn is a beautiful ring planet. And so we take a look at it, in telescope or binoculars, you can actually see the ring of Saturn. And then there's the moons, okay, there's, that would appear. And there's the ring, there's some of the bright moon. Titan is the largest and the brightest moon for Saturn. And then we have Mars. Mars is right here, the red planet, half the size of the Earth, the rocky red planet, the most visited planet in the solar system. And Mars, you'll be hearing 
in the nearest coming July, I'm going to start uh, sending the prospect for the March 2020 to another rover to visit Mars. So this is where all the planets are, Mars, Saturn, and Jupiter. And Mars, uh, Saturn, and Jupiter are going to put on a show this summer, sometime around uh, late July and August. And they're going to only be a few degrees apart. Okay, so people are going to be talking about this. And then there's Mars. And Mars is going to uh, be in the morning sky as well for a while. But that's just where you would find our morning planets. Okay? And so Mercury is just now just past solar conjunction. And it's going to be heading toward the evening. So you'll see Mercury going to become a morning object or evening object that is uh, for the nighttime sky okay and so what I encourage you to do is to download the app that I mentioned at the beginning of the program use your app and this is a way you can orient yourself to the nighttime sky and if you go outside and get connected with the GPS and then you use your compass bearing, you can find all these objects on the variety of astronomy apps. You can also use skymap.com and download the map for the current night sky, and that's where you're going to find the latest uh, uh, constellation and the planets. And you can download that map, map monthly and follow the news. There's sometimes you'll hear in the news something's happening. Uh, later on in April, we have the the Lyrid meteor shower. And because it uh, requires you to get away from steady light, it can be hard to see the meteor, but every once in a while you'll see some bright ones. And so this is the current night sky, and hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll go out and take a look at the nighttime sky. So there you go. Are you able to look at the nighttime sky? Just remember, you're not alone. There are other people are looking at the same sky as you are. We'll get through this, and we'll hope to see you again very soon. Everybody at Omsi, miss you.